So hello, hello everyone. Welcome if you are new to the channel. Welcome back if you love me. I love you too. We're here for Capricorn's energy for August. So if this message catches you in divine time, uh, we all know time works in a spiral, right? So we revisit energies all the time. If you catch it in divine time, chances are there is a relevant message in here for you. All right. We don't believe in coincidences here. <laughs> Definitely don't believe in coincidences. So... Capricorn, Capricorn energies, Capricorn placements, and especially the house in which Capricorn rules. This reading will give you some insight. I'm using the Prism Tarot here. All right. For those of you who are interested in the deck, it's a neat little deck. <laughs> there will be a separate video for guidance called Ophucuse. So if you hit the subscribe bell, you will not miss it. It's upcoming. All right, I usually do the Ophucuse readings after I've done all of the different monthly zodiacs. All right, so with that said, drop a like and leave comments because you can get bonus readings in October for the August video stats. Make sure to do that. Uh, Sagittarius <laughs> whooped everybody's ass for June, and so they're getting the only bonus reading this month. They got most views, most likes, and most comments, and so they're getting an extra large, uh, extra special bonus for August. So if you would like bonus readings yourself, Capricorn and want additional messages, extra energies coming through, different readings for different groups of Capricorns, then definitely um, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Share it out with your other Cappy placement friends. All right? Spirit, please. What is going on? What insight can you give us for Capricorn? Capricorn energy, Capricorn placements for August 2023 and divine time when we revisit these energies. What is going on? Now I'm going to face the cards towards me to start just so I can get a feel for the cards and then I'll turn them around so you guys can see them real nice. All right. So bear with. Let's see. We're starting with the high priestess. The nine of clouds. The Three of Lightning. What else? What else is going on with Happy Energy Spirit? The Magician. And the master of raindrops. All right, Clarice, please. Really, High Priestess is clarified by the moon. That's double Pisces. I mean, your ruling planet, Saturn, is in Pisces right now. What else? Clarify the nine of clouds. Clarify the three of lightning and clarify the magician and the master of raindrops. All right, bottom of the deck is the three of gems, top of the deck is the two of clouds. All right, Cap. So looking at the top and bottom of the deck, indecision being where you're consciously at <laughs> for August and knowing that there's collaboration or work that needs to get done. Um, Apprentice of Gems is under that efficiency with the star I feel like 
ultimately Capricorn, especially if you've been relatively isolated and you might be indecis indecisive, right, about whether or not you want to let people back in um, and get close to people or if you just kind of want to ride it out on your own a little bit longer. I think at the end of the day, whichever one you choose is not wrong, right? There's no such thing as wrong choices, just better choices and choices that we learn from. <laughs> but uh, I'm feeling like no matter what you choose, it's fine. It's just you're kind of on that fence of do I let people in or don't I? Right? How close do I really let myself get to people? How much do I really let them get to know me? And I feel like I feel like a part of you misses people. But I, I'm also picking up on the the acknowledgement that there was a certain amount of ignorance that you possessed. <laughs> and now that you've really gotten to know people and how <laughs> far wide people can go from where you thought they were and how you thought you knew them, people can really surprise you. Um... I think you're more inclined to, I feel like you're more inclined to stay on your own and or at least keep other people at arm's length. You're disinclined to get deep with them. I think a part of you knows too, looking at these cards, that... Other people put you in a position of competition, and I don't think you actually like competing. I think you'd rather just run the fucking show instead of having to prove whatever or anything to anybody, <laughs> you know? Like, it's, it's such a menial game. And it's just, it's not worth Cap's time, right? It's not worth Capricorn's time. Alright. So we're starting with... The High Priestess and the Moon. I feel, especially because, I'll put them both up, especially because the Nine of Clouds is there clarified by the Five of Lightning, I feel like, you know, dealing with groups and dealing with people just puts you in shadow work. It just puts you in shadow work. You're just dealing with a, a wounded mirror, right? Someone who has wounds in their mirror. And you don't want to deal with their wounds. You don't want their wounding in your mirror. Right? Because the outer reflects your inner. And so to have certain people in your outer experience whom are wounded. You just don't fucking care for it. <laughs> like, I think a part of you knows, right? That dealing with other people brings up shadows. And like I said, it's not that you don't like people. It's just it kind of throws you through a loop. It throws your energy off. It throws the manifestation off. You're better when you're very much in your own lane. I think the more you involve other people, the uh, sketchier the energy gets, the more unpredictable the manifestation gets the more out of control you feel, right? I think it causes anxiety when chaos pops up and you didn't cause it. So you're thinking about the journey that you're on, right? This three of lightning and you're 
contemplating what's worth it. Do you focus on three or do you value one? You know, it's like a quality over quantity type thing. And if the quality is you right now because everything else is quantity, well, then I guess you're focusing on yourself, which you end up creating a period of, of rest for yourself, right? It's peace. It's mental peace. You're choosing not to not to buy into or participate in other people's drama, other people's trauma, right? <laughs> Their trauma drama. <laughs> You're not interested. Like, come and find me, resonate to me, cross my path when you're healed. You know, when you have found peace in the same solitude, when you've come to the same awareness that I've reached, that other people coming into your life are more likely than not to bring up shadows. And I think if you're feeling hesitant to let certain people in or you're keeping certain people at bay, just naturally keeping them at bay, it's because they're not in, a, in higher alignment with where you are or where you're going. You know, life is life. We always have to run into people. You know, we run into people at our day jobs. We run into people, you know, at the supermarket and at the bank. And we have to, you know, participate to a certain extent. But I feel like you are very mature, right? Mature emotionally. I think you hold compassion for other people. But first and foremost, I think you're holding compassion for yourself. Like, I think you are very well aware of the fact. And showing yourself great mercy. I think you're so emotionally intelligent that you are showing yourself mercy. And holding compassion for other people at the same time because you know dang right well you being in a higher alignment than they are to go down to their level and try and bring them up only ends up hurting them because people get can easily get up and out and elevate when they want to. If you've got to go down to someone else's level and into their life and into their nuances of energy to bring them up, they're not ready. If they were ready, they'd be doing it, <laughs> right? The best you could do is just simply be and exist in your authenticity and just lead by example. This is what sovereign looks like. This is what not letting other people's energy affect you looks like. I think you're more inclined to lead by example than to try and teach, right? Than to try and... Uh, teacher-student dynamic, because when you're in a teacher-student dynamic, uh, it's both ways. <laughs> it's both ways. But if you're leading by example and just simply doing and being, that's a different story. So, Capricorn, if you are indecisive about letting other people in, like, if it's not a fuck yeah, it's a fuck no. If it's not a fuck yeah, then it's a fuck no. And that's that's the way it breaks down. If the decision to let someone in is not easy, then it's a no. Not today. Not right now. Not until more question marks are answered. Not until the alignment's in alignment. You know? You'll know when it's right to let someone in. You'll also know when it's right to let someone go and, and let them move along their way. Right? Getting them out of your way. So trust yourself, trust the manifestation, trust your intuition. Okay? Trust your intuition. Because if you don't feel like doing more fucking shadow work, which you can only do so much shadow work, right, until the shadows get fucking redundant and you're like, God, this shadow is so fucking annoying. <laughs> you know, it's like watching a rerun of the same episode over and over and over again. And it's like, ugh, like, give me something new, you know, like, it's an annoying shadow. So, I, I don't think you want to rerun it. I don't think you want to rerun the past. I don't think you want to rerun trauma drama. I don't think you want, you know, new new people, same old story. You know, same old bullshit. I think you're just over it. 
And I think that's the right space to be in for August. I think it's good that you're in a natural state of self-mercy and awareness, not just of self, right? That sovereign self, but being aware that the outer experience is trying to suck you in especially with Capricorn being back at 29 degrees and, and doing one big last hurrah on your sign, at least for this year. I mean, it'll kiss, Pluto will kiss into your sign next year, but n not that long. <laughs> this is Pluto's major, last major bump in the Capricorn. And uh, I think, you know, the shadows are kind of reaching, <laughs> reaching to grab you as you get away type thing. So just you know, stay in your lane. Just stay in your lane. You're good in your lane. You're good. You're good in your lane. All right. So Capricorn, I love you. I'll catch you in a few say. Don't forget to hit that bell so you don't miss it. Definitely drop a like if you haven't already. Leave me comments if it resonated. I love you all and I will catch you again soon. Bye.